What's going on everyone? In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys about how to be recruited to be a division one athlete. I'm gonna be breaking down the recruiting process, talking with coaches and official visits, as well as much more. So make sure to stay tuned. In return for me doing this video, if you guys could like this video and subscribe to my channel, it'd be a huge help. So thanks so much and get, let's get right into this video. So plenty of you guys might be thinking to yourself, now who is this guy? And why should I listen to him about college recruiting? Well, my name's Kyle Millis. I'm a college athlete here at the University of California, Berkeley, and I just finished my four years of college athletics, and I'm here to tell all. I've been through the recruiting process plenty of times and been on the other side of things of seeing what it's like for recruits to come in, and I wanna share some advice to all you guys who are going on recruiting trips or wanna become a Division One athlete. I had aspirations of doing that one day, and I wanna give back and help out all of you guys. And now you might be thinking, Cal, I mean, that's not the best sports school, however, the swim team that we're on, we're pretty successful. In fact, we won the national championship this year. So I definitely know what I'm talking about. I know what it's like to have top tier talent coming into your university and how to treat them and what we wanna hear from you guys. So let's get right into it and explain the recruiting process. So something about the recruiting process is that it's different for everyone. My recruiting process was different from plenty of my teammates. I had teammates who were like top commits in swimming and they committed their junior year. I waited till my senior year to go on a bunch of official visits. Juxtapose that with my cousin who played volleyball. She committed to Michigan at the start of her sophomore year of college. So there's plenty of timelines for recruitings and it varies by sport. Just know that if you work hard enough, I guarantee that there will be a fit for you, whether it's at the D1, D2, or D3 level. But in this video, I'm gonna break down how I became a D1 athlete through these recruiting tactics. I link some information down below that talks about sport by sport variations, but the big dates to keep on your calendar are September 1st and June 15th. So when I was being recruited, the process was much different. Nowadays, you can get recruited and come on visits during your junior year. That wasn't a thing when I was being recruited. Sure, you could go on junior days, but seniors and juniors were never on trips together. So the recruiting process has completely changed and it's really gone towards social media. However, in quantitative sports like track and swimming, the recruiting process is actually really easy. When I was getting recruited, I made a list of schools that I was comfortable going to and I put them on a whiteboard. I ranked them by school, meaning academics, the team, team culture, and location. So at the end of it, I came together with a big whiteboard of what I wanted and where each college that I was looking at fell on that. It really helped me give a bigger picture of what was going on and allowed me to really narrow down my options to three schools that I wanted to focus on and take official, official visits at. From there, I reached out to all of those coaches and sent them a long email explaining who I was and why I thought I'd be a good fit for their team, as well as attaching my times down at the bottom. Now, for basketball or baseball or football, this might be a little bit different as you might have to send kind of your mixtape. I've linked plenty of resources down below on what varies by sport by sport and how the recruiting process works in different sports. After I reached out to a bunch of coaches, here's what I heard. Nothing. I didn't hear anything from a lot of them. In fact, back when I was getting recruited, July 1st was the first day that coaches were able to call you. And you know what I got on my phone? Crickets. I was expecting that as one of the top five swimmers in the state of Washington, I'd at least get calls from some local colleges. Nothing. Don't worry if you're not getting heavily recruited at the beginning. I still ended up at the number one swimming school in the country. So the process is long and it varies for everyone, but just remember to stick to the emails, stick to your mixtapes, and persistence is key. In the long run, persistence paid off for me and it just so happened that one of the swim meets that I was going at the Cal men's team was also going to be at. Given that I had a really strong relationship with my club team coach, he helped make an introduction to the Cal swim team coach, and then from there, sparks started flying. I think something that's really important in the recruiting process is to have a strong relationship with your coach, whether it be a club coach, a high school coach, or whoever's gonna best represent you. Your club and high school coaches can reach out to these coaches on your behalf, but at the end of the day, what college coaches wanna see is you reaching out and you showing interest to them. So sending a nice email attached with why you should be at their school, as well as some quantitative items like times or mixtape is the most helpful thing. And I recommend sending this email to the assistant coach. 
Because at the end of the day, the head coach is just too busy to read all the emails. And the assistant coach at the end of the day is the one who does the recruiting most of the time. While it's great for parents to give input to these coaches, at the end of the day, your parents aren't gonna be the athlete to that coach. So it's really important that coaches see that you're engaged with the program as well and not just your parents. So going back to earlier with the comment about the whiteboard and how I rank the schools based on school, academic team, etc. One thing that I wanted to make sure while I was looking at it all was would I be happy at that school if the program were to get cut or if I was to get medically injured and not be able to swim ever again? It's something you definitely have to consider. And one of the main reasons I actually landed on Cal, the academics here are amazing. The swim team, amazing. Location, amazing. At the end of the day, I would have been fine going to Berkeley without the swim team here. So that's something that's really important that you make sure, because plenty of teams throughout the country have gotten cut due to recent financial crises definitely something to think about. As I mentioned earlier, there's plenty of databases where you can probably plug in all of your stats like Huddle for football, Swim Cloud for swimming, or in plenty of other apps for baseball and basketball. Having an up-to-date profile on those apps will help college coaches. Whether you guys believe it or not, most of the time coaches are, are looking at those databases, they're looking at the huddles, they're looking for mixtapes online, and social media is becoming even more and more imperative to be using to show that you are who you really are on the field, in the pool, on the track, whatever it might be, coaches are now looking at that. While this is kind of a bummer and I hope that this is in the direction that college sports takes forever, I know it's becoming absolutely huge in baseball, basketball, and football, and it's imperative that you know your sport and hone your niche in that sport. While you might not get a swarm of emails coming back to you after reaching out to those 10 or so schools, you will get replies if you are persistent. So eventually the Cal coach following the meet reached back out to me on one of my earlier emails and said, hey, let's set up a call. On that call, I made very certain that I was dedicated and that Cal was my number one school. So whether I actually believed it or not, I wanted to make it so he knew that Cal was my number one school. And it just so happened that after that call, he invited me on an official visit. Now, I'm gonna be doing a whole other video on what to do and what to not do on an official visit. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Getting that official visit is key. That official visit solidifies that they are interested in having you on the team and that they just really have to see how you kind of fit within the team culture and then how the scholarship stuff plays out. Obviously the recruiting process, as I mentioned, is different for different sports and it's different based on where you're coming from. Plenty of my teammates are international students and they actually went through a very similar process. Outside of getting their student visas and getting all their test scores normalized into the United States system, they didn't have much of a difference in the application process as the coaches on the team at most division one school levels are able to make some pull with the admissions department and get some things moved around, if you might wanna say. And yeah, after I went on that official visit, I got a call from the Cal coach and he said, Kyle, we want you to be a part of this team. And it was all thanks to these three steps that I followed that I mentioned earlier in the video. To recap, here's what you have to do to get recruited to be a D1 athlete. First, be persistent. If that coach doesn't call you back, make sure to email him. Follow up in any way possible. It's not creepy. Sometimes they are really just busy and it doesn't mean that they don't want you either. Second, make sure to advocate for yourself. Plenty of coaches will tell you, hey, you're just not good enough yet. Maybe reach out in a couple months. We might have a spot open for you. Make sure to advocate to your, for yourself to that coach. Continue to tell them why you think you'd be a great fit and follow up with them. Persistency and advocation for yourself are the main thing in the recruiting process. And my third and final tip is to email the assistant coach. It's going to get through much quicker if you email the assistant or the associate coach at all these places or if there's a recruiting coordinator and it says online. Sometimes all it takes is just going and finding their roster shot and finding their email under that and just shooting them an email. Who knows, the worst thing they could say is no and I've dealt with rejection plenty of times and I still landed myself here. So all I'm saying is no never hurts, but at least you asked. And yeah, that's how I got recruited to be a division one athlete. Make sure to keep up the hard work in your sport and keep up the persistency, advocation, and emails to all the coaches. And I'm sure from there, you'll find yourself at your new home. So by following those simple steps, I was able to come to my dream school, win two national championships, and have plenty of other success outside the pool. Not everyone's process will be the same, like I said earlier, and not everyone will have the same results. However, by using these tactics, myself, my teammates, and plenty of other recruits that have come through here have had success using these tactics. 
So I wish you guys all the best of luck in using and implementing these with your own recruiting profile. For more recruiting advice and college athletic tips and behind the scenes looks, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, I'll see you guys next time.